Ooh. I look cute. I look cute. <laughs> Welcome back to Jenny's journey. I <laughs> this is hilarious, but I have a good video for you today. I have a good video for you, you nurse practitioners, or nurse practitioners, or nurse practitioner students who are watching this video. As you guys know, I just finished my master's in nursing. I am going to be sitting to take my boards to become a pediatric nurse practitioner. I am super, super duper excited for that. Um, yeah, so I just finished um, my master's in nursing graduation was this past weekend and actually I went to Vail, Colorado to celebrate with my family and I'll insert some pictures here. Gosh, like aren't they cute we had the greatest time make sure you go watch all of those vlogs I'll link them up above because when I tell you it was a family vacation of a lifetime it was definitely um, one for the books and I'm so glad I was um, vlogging so that I could share that with you guys and just look back on for me and my family because we've been watching it every day since we left Belle and we just left Belle a few days ago <laughs> but it, it was truly truly a blast I'm so glad I got to experience that with my family. But you're here because I am trying to figure out what's next on my nurse practitioner journey or bring you guys along to tell you guys what's next. I'm here to enlighten you guys and just actually walk you guys through my next steps, which should be your next steps on your nurse practitioner journey. As you guys know, like I said, I'm done with school now. So it's like, okay, I'm done with school what's next um i've said this in a lot of videos your school um your school should provide you with some guidance as to what's to do when you're done with school so like applying for boards applying for your license applying for your mpi number things like that and if you don't um if they don't guide you this video i got you i got you <laughs> Um, you've graduated, you've walked across the stage, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully when you guys see this in the future, you've walked across the stage, unlike my virtual graduation. Anywho, um, and now you're just waiting for your degree to be conferred because let's just be real, you can walk across the stage and you don't have your degree and your degree is not conferred. <laughs> that has happened to some people. But now you're waiting for the university just to make sure you've done everything. You checked everything off your checklist to make sure that you can graduate and you can get your degree. They confer your degree two to three weeks after done with school and maybe even in the new year if you're graduating now um, around the holiday times just because the schools are getting ready to close down for the holidays for Christmas and for New Year. So you may have to wait until the new year for your degree to be conferred but what you can do is which is step number one here so step number one is to go ahead and make sure you and you can do this now like or you could have done this you know at the tail end of your program um, when you're in your last semester go ahead and apply for your transcript to be sent to your certification body my certification body is going to be pncb which is the pediatric um, nurse practitioner certification body that's who i'll be getting my certification from in order to be able to practice as a certified pediatric nurse practitioner so um, I'm actually doing this video today because I need to, I have my planner here. You guys know how I feel about my handy dandy planner. <laughs> um, I have my planner here. I have everything written down because these are the steps that I'm actually getting ready to do today. So this information that I'm giving you in this video is real information in real time. And it's something that I'm actually getting ready to do. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, now that I'm done with school, what do I do now? And um, I think a lot of us um, nursing students, nurse practitioner students, we want to know what do we do after we graduate? What's the next step? So step number one is making sure you get your transcript sent to your certification body. Step number two, after you've gone um, through your school's um, 
your school's portal, whatever that portal is, to make sure you get your transcript sent to your certification body, go ahead and start filling out your application and make sure you have your application money ready because for the PNCB, um, that's a $385 cost. I'm gonna try to include dollar amount signs here because every single one of these steps, unfortunately, is gonna cost you some type of money. And I don't think as nursing or students, um, nursing students, nurse practitioner students, we realize that, oh my gosh, like I've already had to pay for tuition, I've had to pay for my graduation application, I've had to pay for this. Every other step and, and to get your license and your certification is a dollar amount. And I think I calculated and it was like another, like an extra $2,000 almost that I'm gonna have to spend and within the next few weeks to get my license and get my certification. And I'm just like, whoa. I mean, whoa. I ain't got no money. That's why I'm trying to be a nurse practitioner so I can get a little bit more money. <laughs> but, <clears throat> so step number two, go ahead and start your application process with your certification body. Like I said, my my certification body is PNCB and my test, uh, my pediatric nurse practitioner board certification test is gonna cost me $385. Yes, $385. And you best believe your girl better make sure she passes on the first time because I don't have an uh, extra $400 to give PNCB if I decide that I don't want to study and, pa and fail. So step number three is to go ahead and start your start your license application to whatever state you're in. For me, I will be going to the Florida Board of Nursing. If you're in Georgia, Georgia Board of Nursing. If you're in Maryland, Maryland Board of Nursing. California, Cali California Board of Nursing. So on and so forth. If you're a nurse, you already know what the Board of Nursing is. <laughs> and you're very familiar with the Board of Nursing and the website because you have to renew your nurse license every two years. At least here in the state of Florida, we have to renew our license every two years. And so I'm very familiar with the website. I've already been looking at it, stalking it. And for me to get my license, it's gonna cost me $110 for the license and then $85 for the background check. Yes, you need another background check even though you're a registered nurse. And then for me, I just got my nurse license switched over to a nurse compact license. And I just had to pay to get refi um, to be fingerprinted again is $85. And now I have to pay another $85 to be fingerprinted so that I can get my license as a nurse practitioner here in the state of Florida. And if you're like me, and if you're considering getting your license in another state, my mentor, she did tell me that getting your initial license in another state is much easier than the reciprocity process. And reciprocity, um, if you are a nurse, you should know, but reciprocity just means they're using your license from another state to help confer your license in a different state. Tip number four is to go ahead and register for a question test bank and or a review certification, a certification review course. I uh, am going to be doing the Fitzgerald review course. I'll leave um, the link down in the description box. There's another review course called Barclays review course, and I'll also leave that in the link um, um, in the box for you. Um, the bar, the the Fitzgerald review course is four hundred and ninety five dollars. Yes, four hundred and ninety five dollars. And I know that's like a steep amount, but the way my instructors put it in my program is, do you want to go ahead and pay the three eighty five and the four ninety five to just make sure you pass it the first time, or go ahead and keep paying that three eighty five until you pass the test? So I stressed in my NCLEX prep video uh, or how to pass the NCLEX video, I'll link that up above, that you're going to need to take a review course and answering questions is going to be what? Key. I personally think it's important that you take a review course and I also think it's equally as important to answer questions. A resource that I just recently purchased as well, I think it was... I'm not really sure how much it was. I'll have to go back and look. But I just purchased this Board Vitals, which is a question bank. It has over 1,000 questions to help you test your knowledge for the information that you will be tested on for your board certification exam. So far, it is really good because they have the easy, medium, and hard questions that your board certification will also have. And I, it's 
is like leading me in the direction of okay this is what I need to study this is what I you know this is what I know this is what I don't know this is what I you know I'm good on this is what I need to study a little bit more so that I can make sure I am passing boards this first time around I am so freaking nervous about this but I just I don't know I'm nervous about boards because this is my livelihood and I don't have a lot of money to keep paying, like I said, to pay that 385 to keep taking a test over and over again. One, one and done. <laughs> so, um, tip number four, making sure you take a review, um, review course and making sure you're answering questions. I am going to take a, a little hiatus from work and I am going to just study like all day study for a month through and so I am going to take you guys along to kind of give you my study plan and what I plan to do and just always remember as people get in my comments and remind me because I sometimes don't say it but just remember what works for me may not work for you and I, I get that because we are all different people where we all learn differently I'm visual I like to see pictures I like to you know see it animated so it's just with the way I learn may not be for you but it is a way that I can show you what I am doing and maybe you can come up with a study plan that works for you all right tip number five on what's next I'm done with school what's next tip number five is as nurse practitioners um, we are our scope of practice is vastly extended because now we are diagnosing and treating patients so that means we need malpractice insurance because unfortunately we're human mistakes happen and you just need to make sure you're covered so i am going to be looking for companies to find malpractice insurance my mentor did tell me one that she uses and it's about 1200 dollars a year and it's just very important that you have malpractice insurance and that you have it from day one that you're practicing all right chopping it down <laughs> chopping it down chopping it down chop Chop, chopping it down so tip number six have not done this which you probably should have go ahead and tweak your resume in your CV that is key in making sure you find you a job like your resume is what is presented first so make sure your resume and your CV they are presentable they sure your resume is up to date with all of your education and your previous work history number seven number seven make a study plan and stick to it i'm going to do a separate video on my study plan so we'll just leave number seven at make a study plan and stick to it because if i go into what my study plan is going to be that's a separate video within itself um i just don't want to get too long-winded on what i plan to do it's um i want to do i want to give that its own separate video because that is going to be really important in your study plan. And how many times have I told y'all to make a study plan? Like I tell y'all all the time, make sure you have a plan, make sure you stick to it. So make a study plan based upon what date you're thinking about taking your boards. Okay, make a study plan. So tip number eight is making sure you apply for your MPI number, which stands for National Provider Identification. And basically, we have to have an MPI number as, PD, as nurse practitioners, not just pediatric nurse practitioners. Nurse practitioners or doctors, people who are providing medical services, who are treating and diagnosed and need to have an NPI number, basically for billing purposes, especially for Medicaid and Medicare. Um, so go ahead, I want you to go ahead and make sure you are Googling, because that's just what I did. I Googled, how do I get my NPI number? You know, what is the NPI, not even what is the NPI number, but like, how do I get my NPI number? And it, I think applying for your NPI number from what I've seen is this is the only thing that's of zero cost, zero goose egg. Um, you just pretty much have to um, put in an application and apply for it so that you can bill. Number nine, number 10 is next. <laughs> number nine is <laughs> take your board. So I already mentioned that um, when I told you to go ahead and start your application for the board, that your um, cost is $385. So um, just whenever, 
after you've got your um, degree conferred and sent to your certification board body, um, you can go ahead and you can um, schedule a test date. And you once your application is in, you have 90 days to take your certification um, test. So once the board has everything that they need, they've gotten your application, they've gotten your fee, you can go, you have 90 days from when all of that is in and done to schedule your test. So it kind of gives you like an extra three months, but I I wouldn't wait. I would just go ahead and just take it. Like, what are we waiting for? We've done with school, we've studied, we've taken, you know, the review courses, we've answered questions over and over until we're blue in the face. Now it's just time to just go ahead and put the real thing to work. So tip number nine is go ahead and take that test, sis. Go ahead and do it. Oh, bro, I mean, I know we got some men in the, you know, in the nursing field who became nurse practitioners, so y'all, do that thing do, do, do that thing <laughs> number 10 tip number 10 is to go ahead and if you have already not started your job search go ahead and find that perfect nurse practitioner job i am excited to say i already have a job as a pediatric nurse practitioner <laughs> oh my god so that just puts more pressure on me for passing the boards and y'all oh my gosh whoo I'm getting just hot thinking about it. <laughs> I'm nervous, but yet excited because this is the next part of my journey. The next part of Janine's journey is becoming a nurse practitioner and getting settled into that field because while I am not an expert um, in nursing, I do know quite a bit and now I'm starting all over and becoming a novice. Yes, a novice once again. And I just have so much more to learn. I only know that going to school and studying for board boards is the tip of the iceberg. And everything that I've seen in clinic is only probably 1% of what I could be seeing and seeing, what I could be seeing, treating and diagnosed, or diagnosing and treating. So I'm really excited. And I just, once again, thank you guys for coming along Janine's journey. I hope these 10 tips help you guys. I hope you get something from this video. I have gotten requests for lots of videos. So you guys, I'm coming with it. Just remember, I'm still trying to study for boards and working full time as a nurse and so, your girl is tired, I'm tired. But I have lots of videos planned for both um, registered nurse students, practitioner students. I have a slew of videos that I'm, I'm gonna get out to you guys. I'm probably gonna film one more video after this before I unpack my clinical bag to um, go ahead and put that video out what to what I took to clinical as a nurse practitioner student um, and what's in my clinical bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and film that video. That video will be out for you guys soon. And I really do hope you enjoy it. And I will see you guys for the next video. Bye. Your school. Oh, it's a tracker on the thing. Already had. For days. For. So, number seven is, or is it number eight?